Zoe Druitt over at Metro recently wrote a somewhat devastating article. Now this goes into uh, poverty in the UK. Now unless you live in a golden mansion or anywhere else that most conservative politicians live in, you're very aware that poverty in the UK is a severe crisis and it is only getting worse. Well, Zoe Druitt wrote the piece uh, reporting what a major study by the social major uh, social metric commissions excuse me uh, recently put out and there's a difference between knowing there is a problem and then knowing the numbers about the problem so uh, just to touch on it uh, it revealed that 8.4 million working adults 4.5 million children and 1.4 million pensioners are living below the breadline in Britain today. The, the only real bit of good news is that we actually expected pensioners to be far worse off. And it's horrible just saying that sentence. Jesus. <sighs> Nearly half of these numbers, uh, 6.9 million, are living in families with a disabled person, the research, uh, the research suggests. Um, I'll leave the link down below for, for the full article. Uh, it's, it's definitely worth a read, but it will definitely ruin your day. Um, what's the cause of this? I mean, that basically is, is what this comes down to. It's what I want to talk about. What is the cause for such extreme poverty in a country that's supposedly so wealthy? In a country that supposedly, if you listen to people like Jacob rees and Theresa May, the EU couldn't possibly function without us. And yet almost 14 million people live below the breadline. The answer is actually disgustingly simple. Austerity. The Conservatives are very quick to say that we need to live within our means. And this is why they've jacked up their own pay to 77 plus thousand a year. While teachers, I believe, have seen an increase of uh, maybe two, three thousand. Police again, two, three thousand. Nurses, I believe, have stayed the same. But these are all jobs that are less than 30,000 a year. And a politician who works less than 200 days a year is taking home 77,000 with expenses, with a £70 a day allowance for lunch. And yet there are 4.5 million children in this country who are going without. Over 60,000 children in this country who are now no longer entitled to free school meals. During the summer, children had to go to food banks just to get something to eat. And yet, I'm reminded of an interview Theresa May gave a little while ago, a couple of years ago now, saying that there are many complicated reasons as to why people go to food banks. No, it's very, very simple. It's because they need something to eat and they can't afford it. Wages have not kept up with inflation. Austerity is nothing but a punishment for the poor and the struggling because they weren't born into the right families. And yet constantly the media distracts us with, hey, you need to hate them Muslims. Hey, them people over in Brussels, we have no sovereignty. The simple fact is, if you want to look at the problems in the UK, they stem from austerity. They stem from the wealthiest taking money from you, from me, from our kids, from our doctors, from our teachers. And they give it to the people who don't need it. The wealthiest in the country, the people who exploit tax loopholes that inland revenue will not go after because they're afraid it will damage their reputation. It is absolutely obscene that 14 million people, over 14 million people in the UK live in such states. There is no reason for it. There is no need for it. 
And now Theresa May's newest statement is she's going to focus on social housing in Britain. That's going to be her new main thing. She's had two years. Homelessness has continued to grow since she took office. Poverty has continued to grow since she took office. 81,000 people have died in the last three years due to benefit sanctions. But it's okay, because Theresa May has said she's going to focus on social housing. I think it's high time we had a politician who didn't say they were going to do stuff and actually did it. It's about time we had a politician who actually represented the people. And if BBC, ITV, Sky News and everyone else won't talk about these issues and won't tell people where the actual problem comes from, then it falls down to the rest of us to bridge that gap. Because it won't get better until people force the wealthy to account.